Hey, fellas. Or good night, mites. Been working on the CAC Saber. Uh, this is part two. I get it all together. And this is a lot more challenging than what I anticipated when I when I uh, took on this this build. But uh, the front nose, that resin nose piece, when I sprayed my first coat of primer on it, it was full of pores. I mean, it looked like a 15-year-old kid with bad acne. It was just horrible. So I did a lot of work on that. I got it almost to a point now where I can throw some uh, paint on it. I think I'm going to use AK aluminum. I don't know. I, I got some white aluminum uh, Alclads that I may try. I'm not real familiar with Alclads, so um, I, I may try that. But my painting will be on the next episode. Uh, I show you just a few things with rescribing, and I use some of my uh, uh, Magic Sculpt or Apoxy Sculpt for some filling along the wing roots. And uh, just kind of show you the changes that I made to it. Uh, it is actually right back there. Check it out. But uh, I've been <laughs> I've been working nonstop on this. Uh, although I did kind of take a break just to give my mind a little uh, refresher, and I ended up making a base. I mean, this isn't going to go to the owner. This is just for. Uh, I figured since I'm going to be displaying some of these planes on the next few builds on their legs, I thought you know what I'll make a little advertising base to uh, to show it on. So kind of made that. Trump 2020. So anyway, uh, just kind of gave me a little breather from the monotony of sanding and filling and all that stuff. So anyway, I'll quit yapping. Let's get on with the video. All right, let's take a look at what we've got. I've got the fuselage halves together. I did add some extra detail. There were, uh, I found a couple other reference pictures that I hadn't seen before, and I determined that my opening up here was too big, so I went ahead and uh, deleted half of it with some plastic card and sanded it smooth. Uh, also, there were some, look like proud sitting panels uh, right along here and over here. And also there was some kind of a, a panel that stuck up with a little hole in it on this side of the plane, so I added that. The uh, nose section went on pretty well. The, because of the, the resin part of the nose right at the edge, it like kind of curved in. So I had to fill all that in with my my filler. Wasn't that big of an issue. Now I did, while, while I'm sanding this, I am removing a lot of the detail, especially the rivet detail, which was real shallow to begin with. And some of the pictures I've seen, you really can't hardly see the rivets from a distance. So I think what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna go ahead and spray this with some Mr. Surfacer 1000. Try to get all those rivets filled in. If some show up, I think that'll be fine because if you look at it, some of them are, you can see some of them, and some of them you can't. In some pictures, you can't see any. So I think it's going to be okay if I just delete the rivets on it because there are a lot of them and they're really shallow. So uh, I think once I get a coat of primer on it, uh, we'll be good with that. The uh, I added some aluminum tubing for the guns and then a little piece of plastic card for that little brace that sits there on each side. Uh, and, and keep in mind, this isn't going to be 100% accurate. I'm just doing the best I can do. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm just hoping it doesn't look like a turd when I'm done. So that's my goal. Uh, as far as the this resin piece, I'm trying to replicate it. I've also added a couple holes for some tubes I'm going to stick in there for like some kind of a drain tube or something. The uh, scoop, I'm in the process. I've glued those up with plastic card. And then uh, once that dries, I'll shave it down. And I should have a decent looking scoop on there. And then I obviously I cut my other intakes and I'll take care of those. So just got to let that dry. Probably a day. These This white plastic card seems to take a while before it really hardens up. So that's where I'm at. I'll get to uh, spraying this and uh, I will scribe my panel lines after I spray so I can see where I'm at because with all this messy looking stuff up here, I'm not really going to be able to see where my lines are. So it's just going to be better if I get it all one, one uniform color. Now this is going to be a silver color, not a natural metal finish, but uh, like a high speed silver or something. But uh, even at that, any little scratches and stuff are going to show up like a light bulb. So 
my primer hopefully uh, is going to take care of that priming and wet sanding. So hopefully I can get all the scratches out of it. If I don't, I will see it once I throw my um, first coat of silver on. So that's where we're at, fellas, and I will see you in a bit. All right. Well, here we are, and I put a bunch of coats of Mr. Servicer 1000 on this and sanded uh, after each coat. And I've gotten rid of most, if not all, of the rivet detail. I've left a little bit of rivet detail on some of the sections, like right here on the air brakes and then right along here, just to break it up. But the majority of it is all smooth. And with this being a silver finish, it is any little mistakes are going to show through. So uh, once I put my final coat of primer on here, I will be able to notice if I've got... Uh, any mistakes I think I'm pretty well smoothed I've sanded it down to about 800 grit and then once I get my final coat I'll sand it down again with like maybe a thousand 1200 2000 grit sandpaper to get it all smooth but before I do that <clears throat> uh, I want to add in another one of the features of this plane is are all these little doors and hatches and stuff up here now they're not all completely accurate um, I've used some of the ones that were already on the plane, uh, and then I've added some more once I've got the primer on. Now with this resin piece, with it being so porous, I don't want to try to, I didn't want to try to scribe in to the actual resin part. I wanted this hard shell of Mr. Servicer on here to, to do my lines. Now you can see here this gun uh, area right here, it's not perfect. It's the resin molding hand I'm not gonna try to make it perfect I just you know it is what it is so hopefully with it painted it won't look as bad but it's it's just not very good um, so how I'm doing this is I've already done it to this side I've already scribed in all these little hatches and stuff uh, to their approximate locations now uh, like I said it's not gonna be 100% accurate but uh, you know it is what it is so how I'm doing this is I've got my little template here and I think I've shown this before but uh, I'm just lightly gonna go around because I'm gonna add a circle hatch right here and just lightly going around it doesn't take much to actually scribe through this primer and I'm just gonna gradually go around here and get a real shallow panel line in with my with my scribing tool and if you if you if you go too fast and dig in too hard it's not gonna be even you're gonna dig in and I'm not looking for a real prominent panel line I just want something there to represent this hatch so I'm just barely putting any pressure And I should have a decent hatch right there. Um, I was trying to figure out if I could put these little ribs inside of the gun port. And I thought maybe using little bitty strips of tape. But honestly, I don't think that's going to work. So I'm just going to leave that as is. So I'm going to continue uh, trying to replicate the little hatches and stuff that are up here. As you can see, I went ahead and scribed the rest of this, um, all these panel lines, and they turned out okay. Not perfect, but you know it's better than what it was with the uh, the resin, the resin panel lines that they had in there. So I'm going to continue with this, but then I also want to show you the wings. I've got these, the uh, area down here pretty much done. I still need to do a little bit more sanding and priming. I'll probably wait and prime this once I get it on the plane. Once I get it. To, together I probably still need to do a little bit more with this but uh, I went ahead and tried to sand the rivets out of this area out of the uh, fr from from here back I'm gonna spray this a natural metal finish like a real shiny finish and then this is gonna be the the silver color and so I, I tried to get rid of most of those rivets but we'll prime that and take care of those as well now one interesting thing uh, they on the tanks they have these little doohickeys 
that stick out and attach to the plane in these little holes. And so what I decided to do is go ahead and build this with the pylon all together. I've went ahead and magnetized it. And instead of having to glue the, uh, the tanks onto the wing, this is all gonna be one unit and I've got it fitted up to where these fit in here just like so. So I'm just gonna paint this whole assembly all in one shot. And then that way when, when I'm done, the, uh, the, the owner can just slap these on here and everything fits perfectly. So basically magnetize these, fit them on there. And then I took this little piece, stuck it in here and then uh, glued it or cemented it to the pylon or the, uh, the tank to get it to where they, they look straight. So I think that is a pretty good solution there. Kind of an odd thing with this little strut here. So that's where I'm at. I'm gonna get to uh, scribing the rest of these lines as best I can and uh, probably put the wings on and then get it in primer and see what she looks like. All right, so I've got the wings on and I've got a little bit of a gap along the wing root. And I don't know if it's gonna show up that well. You can see it there. Not real major, but uh, it is there, so I am gonna wanna fill it. And normally what I would do is I would come along with some testers putty, squeeze it in there, smooth it out with some isopropyl alcohol, and be done with it. But because this is, I've got such a layer of my primer built up, the isopropyl alcohol is just gonna wipe that away. So I don't wanna mess with that, so I'm gonna go ahead and not use the testers putty. I could come along with this Vallejo plastic putty. I know a lot of people are big fans of it. I'm not, it shrinks a lot and um, I don't know. It's, it's water soluble, so you know I've got that going for me. So I could probably use this, but I think what I'm gonna do instead, and the way that these wings went on, <clears throat> this whole thing fit up in there, there really wasn't, I didn't glue right along here. And since it's not really contacting, the plane anyway, there's just a little bit of a gap. Uh, I'm gonna wanna strengthen that as well as fill it. So what I'm gonna use is my Magic Sculpt two-part epoxy putty. And I know I may have shown this before, but we'll do it again. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the resin and a little bit of the hardener. And this is water soluble. So I take equal amounts, just about. And this can get kind of messy, that's the only downside to it. And a little bit goes a long way. So I've actually probably got too much here, way too much. But that's okay. So I'll take equal parts and I will mix it. And a lot of times when I want added strength, because I am gonna ship this, I do want this to be, the, uh, the wings to be really sturdy. And uh, so this is gonna also add to the strength because this really does grip pretty well. You could almost use it as a, I, I, I like to use this as like a glue slash filler. I know saying glue isn't really the, the, the right term, but uh, if you really wanna strengthen two pieces that are glued together, this really does work. Um, it really binds them together. So once it dries. So I've got these all mixed up. And I'm gonna make long noodles. And I'm just gonna use this to fill in that gap. And then I can smooth it out with water. And I should be good to go. Now it does take uh, about, I usually let this dry and harden for about a day before I come back and mess with it. You can sand this stuff, uh, but uh, I wanna avoid sanding along this wing root because I don't wanna destroy any more detail than I need to. Okay. Take my rubber wedding ring off. So I'm just gonna Stick with this right along the wing root. OK. 
Okay. I'm going to dip my little tool. I got a little cup of water here. Just so it doesn't stick to my tool. I'm just going to come along here and try to smush it in that crack. So I'm wanting to get it down in there. Alrighty, just like that, wipe some of this off of here, and I'm just going to keep taking away all this excess, so it's just going to be left in that crack. I'm going to take some cotton swabs, wet them down, and then I can come along here and just start rubbing away the excess. And it's going to, the, uh, what I push down in there is going to stay in the crack and it's going to give me a real solid surface, a real solid join right there, and fill my gap at the same time. Just gonna be a matter of cleaning the rest of this crap up and it just takes a little bit of practice to get used to. Now I will have to probably come in with a toothpick and clean out some of my panel lines there. I want to do that before it dries otherwise uh, it's a lot harder to do to clean those out once it's dry. But you can see already that's starting to fill that in quite nicely. <laughs> then what I can do, I've also got these um, rubber brushes and I can come in here with these let's get uh, I like this round one for this so like when I really get to finishing it up I'll dip it in some water and I can come in there and I can really smooth out that join really get in that crack got to really get in the crack fellas Uh, in, in my opinion, the cotton swabs work the best for really smoothing this out, but for a hard to reach area where the cotton swabs get, not going to be able to get into real well, this does come in handy, this uh, little rubber brush thing. So I'm going to get on with doing this. I'll get both sides done and then I'll probably fill in this seam line along the bottom and uh, we should be good to go. So oop, darn it, I got some right there. So I'll take care of that. So uh, I will show you what it looks like when we're done. All right, fellas, I got my final coat of primer. And for my final coat, I use Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500. And uh, these are my favorite primers. <clears throat> What I'm going to do now, and it's typically what I do with my primer coats, it's pretty smooth. Uh, you can get a real nice smooth finish on uh, with this primer, but uh, I, it can be better. So what I like to do is I like to wet sand it. And there are little goobers and stuff in here that I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but just little goobers that I want to take care of. And uh, one second. 
so what I'm using are these uh, micro mesh sanding, uh, I don't know, it's like sanding cloths, and they come in different grits. This is a 3600, but it's been used a lot. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot of abrasiveness to it, but it's just enough. And I'll, I'll start wet sanding this. Um, and this is what I normally do with my primer. Now, I actually, if you've never seen uh, Greg's models, is his channel, he does some outstanding work. It's actually one of my favorite uh, YouTube modeling channels now. But uh, I saw him on a couple episodes ago where he did a, uh, a large scale, I think it was an Airfix BF-109. He actually wet sanded his Tamiya coat, his like final coat before he got the decals. So I'm going to try that. I normally do this, like I said, with the primer. It just gives it a nice smooth finish and it doesn't take much. Let's get some of those goobers out. And then I will come along with a rag and wipe off the little bit of, of dust that's left. But when you wet sand it, I think it just makes it smoother. So, and keep some of that dust from getting everywhere. And again, I'm not taking off a whole lot. It's pretty smooth as is, but just to get those goobers out and stuff and this, uh, this really helps, in my opinion, especially if you get that uh, like grittiness right along the edge sometimes if you don't do it correctly and you get that grittiness where the, the, uh, the paint dries up and swirls around and sticks to places where it shouldn't. Uh, this is also good to take care of that. So. I will just go along here and knock down any roughness that I got. And that's about all there is to it. So, all right, I will end the, uh, end the video on this note. I will get to finishing wet sanding this and getting it ready for paint. And uh, at the end, I'll just flash up some pictures to show you where we're at. And on the next episode, we'll start uh, throwing some metallic paint at it.